Hey everyone, it's uh, Spencer Haas here. I, it, it's a couple of minutes before we're gonna officially get started, but I'm just gonna do some sound tests and some visual tests. Uh, a few of you are starting to log in. We'll get a bunch more people here in a couple of minutes. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and test out the chat. If you can hear me and can see my screen, you should see the welcome slide that says how to grow a niche site to over $1,000 a month with the big niche site project for revealed. Uh, go ahead and type in the chat and let me know if you can hear me and if you can see my screen, that would be wonderful. Uh, hopefully everything's working great and uh, we can just rock and roll when it's time to get started. So uh, I'm getting a number of people that are saying, yes, they can hear me. They're saying hello. Um, Lewis says loud and clear, Alex loud and clear. Amy says, can hear and see. John, yes, all right, awesome. Good, everybody uh, can, can see me and hear me. I believe uh, all the technical issues. Chris, all the way from Kenya, wow. Other side of the world. Uh, we'll get started officially here in another minute. Uh, if you wanna just type in the chat where you're listening in from, I'm always curious. Um, David's from Australia and it's loud and clear all the way other side of the world. I'm actually in Richland, Washington, which is the western side of the United States up in Washington State. Uh, Chris from Michigan, oh my goodness. Uh, I think you guys can see the chat. It is moving pretty quick. quick. Singapore, Bangladesh, Toronto, Portland, Venezuela, Western Australia, a number of Australia people, another Bangladesh. Uh, India, Tennessee, San Diego, Thailand, uh, Buenos Aires, uh, North Carolina. Uh, somebody used to live in Rich Richland, now in Las Vegas. Uh, Eugene, Oregon, Jamaica, Houston, Texas, uh, Hawaii, Montreal. This is awesome. Uh, all over the place. Uh, Richmond, British Columbia, Pakistan, Seattle. Man, all over the world is pretty much represented here. Uh, Matt from Arizona. I grew up in Arizona, uh, so shout out to everybody down in uh, the summer heat of Arizona. I grew up down in Mesa. So with that, we are gonna go ahead and get started because it is officially the time. It is 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is uh, where I'm at. So this is a convenient time for me. Uh, I know it's not a convenient time for some of you, uh, so I appreciate you staying up late, getting up early. I really do think that this is going to be a value-packed um, uh, webinar. I'm still reading some uh, awesome answers from where people are from all over the place. It's great. So as you can see on the welcome slide here, I'm gonna tell you how to grow a niche site to over $1,000 a month, and I'm going to reveal the site that I've been building for the last 10 months, niche site project for site, that I've been documenting the process on nichepursuits.com. But this is the big reveal party, and I do want it to feel like a party. This should be fun. Uh, let's just have a good time. I do want to give you a lot of value here. But overall, as you have questions, please ask in the chat. I'm gonna uh, answer a few of those along the way, but uh, I'm gonna have a dedicated time at the end for questions. So we'll try to get through as much as possible, but there's going to be a ton of people on this, so I don't know if we can get to everything. I'm going to do my best. So let's uh, let's get started. Uh, one thing that I did promise uh, before we jump into the niche site itself is, well, I'm a runner, and just on Saturday, I ran a half marathon in Mount Hood, Oregon. You can see the little date on these pictures. I uh, should be able to see a couple of pictures now on my screen from my race on Saturday. So um, I uh, did a half marathon. I've done a number of half marathons. I've done full marathons, but this is one that I was excited about to uh, see if I could get a, a PR and uh, it went really, really well. Um, is in the beautiful state of Oregon in the trees and the pines, nice and cool weather. Um, ah, Steve runs a running podcast. Uh, how many other runners we got out there? People that have done in half marathons or full marathons. Um, I ran uh, Boston 
last year. And it's a super long story that I shared a little bit on my podcast. Uh, but let's just say I'm getting back into running after a little bit of a break after my uh, crazy Boston experience. So I ran my half, half marathon on Saturday. I was pleasantly surprised with my time. Here's a picture of uh, some of the group that I ran with. It was uh, a group of about 10 of us. We went up and ran that you can see on the right. Uh, but on the left, you can see my finishing time. Uh, I ran a 131.27. So for me, that's super fast, uh, 6.58 per mile. Uh, I blew away my personal best. I uh, actually beat my goal by uh, almost four minutes. I was shooting for a 135, and I felt really good that day. Um, I've done some different things with my training, done a lot of heart rate training, um, been eating a lot healthier. Anyway, so I, I peaked at the right time and ran a great race. Um, so that's sort of the aside. Let's jump into now the... Um, Niche Site Project 4, shall we? So, I want to give a quick history of um, Niche Site Project 4. And I am moving on to a new slide, so hopefully most people can see that. Uh, Niche Site Project 4, just a quick history to give you guys an idea before I reveal the site here. Uh, so. August 24th of 2018 is when I bought the domain name for my new niche site. And then uh, September 10th, 2018 was when the first article was published on the site. And I really designate this as day one of the site's real age. It's actually when I put something up uh, on the page itself, up on the site. Uh, and then in September, uh, by the end of September 2018, I had 20 articles published, but of course, zero dollars in earnings. And then October 2018, I published 12 new articles, uh, 32 total, zero dollars in earnings. In November 2018, I published seven new articles for 39 total, still zero dollars in earnings. December 2018, 11 new articles were published for 50 total, and I had a nice spike of $26.66 in earnings. Nice uh, Christmas rush there. Uh, then continuing on here, in January of 2019, I published 32 new articles for 82 total, um, and then I only earned $6.00. But in February 2019, I published 10 new articles for 92 total, $15.51 in earnings. So can I just pause here and say that after how many months is that? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six full months and a site only earning $15.51. That can be incredibly frustrating. And so... I do want to acknowledge that I know that building a website is difficult and that if you are in the early stages of building your site and it's only three or four months old and it's not earning any money, that's very normal. Uh, it's important to push through that dip a little bit. Um, then in March 2019, I published 15 new articles for 107 total and earned $128 and 41 cents. And uh, then in April 2019, I published 13 new articles and had a nice jump. Things are finally starting to take off, rank well in Google, earned $562.44. In May 2019, 18 new articles, $740 in earnings, and then this month, or just the previous full month of June 2019, added 20 new articles, and I earned $1,218.41. Huge month, June, uh, the biggest yet. I hit that magical $1,000 in earnings, and that is why I'm going to be revealing the site here live in just a couple of minutes. So I will be completely honest. 
I wanted to give up. This was not easy. Uh, have you ever put a lot of effort into something for six or seven months and not seen hardly any results? If I go back to that slide, I had worked really, really, really hard on this website for six months and it still looked like there was hardly any traction, um, essentially no earnings. I think it was $6 in earnings. Um, and uh, it was frustrating. I, I, I wanted to give up, give up, but I've done this enough times. I've built enough sites to know that it really takes about six months before the traction takes, things start to rank in Google, and then things can quickly escalate after that. So even though it looks like this was a quick spike, you have to realize this site was at zero for six long months, right? So it wasn't just all of a sudden overnight, it uh, came from nothing to something. I had to work at it for seven, eight months. It's now been 10 months, and I'm now starting um, to uh, see some results. Um, this is not pre-recorded, Olhas. Uh, he was asking there. Uh, so if you look at this graph, uh, it, it's, it's pretty uh, interesting. So this is a graph that shows the niche site project for earnings. Uh, again, you can see that all the way through about March of this year, the site was not really earning hardly anything. Uh, but then the traction has really taken off. And um, now in uh, June, uh, here's the earnings uh, I'm showing now. You should see a, a screenshot of my Amazon Associates earnings for June. Uh, let me know if you can't see that. Um, and uh, I can see that I need to log out of this. Uh, okay, so uh, Amazon Associates, $782 in earnings, um, 209 items ordered, uh, a great month. Um, so people, yes, are able to see that. Uh, and then the rest of the earnings came from Ezoic ads. These, um, uh, these are uh, display ads. And so in uh, June, uh, I earned $436 from my Ezoic ads. So when ye, you um, add that together, that's the $1,218 in earnings. So that's where the earnings came from. Uh, now I wanna tell you how I did that, okay? So the to total earnings, $1,218.41. It feels really, really good to hit the $1,000 mark. And what is even more exciting is the trajectory that the site is on. It's increasing rapidly. I expect that July is going to be even better um, and just continue to grow. So here we go. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to jump into it. I'm going to reveal the site right now so that you can all see it. I hope you don't crash my website um, because you're gonna all start visiting it. Uh, but throughout the rest of the presentation, I'm going to be talking about the exact site that earned $1,218 last month. Okay, uh, the site that I've been building for 10 months, um, the one that I've been working so hard on, you guys are gonna be the first to see it uh, here live on the webinar. So without further ado, if we had a drum, drum roll, we'd be doing that now. Um, you can do that on your own desk. But the niche site project for site is ownTheYard.com. It's a site focused on backyard design, backyard games, and backyard gear. That is my site, ownTheYard.com. You are welcome to go visit it uh, and check it out live. So at this point, you can uh, see exactly what I've done the site. You can on the site, you can visit the articles, you can see my linking structure, you can see how my ads are laid out, you can see everything. There it is, it's live, ownTheYard.com. Um, and so what I'm gonna do, and here's just a screenshot of the homepage um, it, uh, that you can see here on your screen. I'm gonna see if I can now actually pull up, and let's see if this uh, works. I'm gonna pull up the site live so I can navigate through it just a little bit. And uh, let me go back there. And there we go, voila. I believe you should be able to see 
um, my uh, my cursor and everything. So if we come over here to own the yard, I just kind of walk you through this a little bit. Um, so I've really got three main categories, yard games, backyard design, and backyard gear. That's exclusively what I focus on. Um, and so you can see the types of content. I've got some featured content, um, landscape, backyard landscaping ideas, backyard games, and then overall backyard design ideas. My homepage, I've got some buying guides that I, I feature. And then my latest blog posts, these are just the latest posts uh, that show up. Uh, overall on the site okay and so I'm going to um, and Josh is going ahead and already looking up stuff seeing how many keywords I have ranking uh, yep I've, I've got a lot there um, we're gonna dive into everything so you've got the site I'm gonna go back and forth between uh, the site and my presentation here just a little bit um, okay so here we go overall I'm going to uh, share the full strategy uh, of the site. So on the yard.com, the strategy of the site. Here's what we're going to cover here tonight. Um, and this may, I don't know how long this webinar is going to go. Um, I expect at least an hour. We got another 45 minutes probably here. So stick around with me. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to try to answer all your questions. I, I've got some prepared things that I'm going to go through to tell you all the strategy and everything. But uh, I'm going to jump into questions um, as well. Uh, Jacob, since I'm looking, are these all your own images or are they stock photos? They are stock photos from Shutterstock. Um, I've uh, shared a lot of this in uh, my updates, but I use uh, Shutterstock. Um, okay, so we're going to cover keyword research, site structure, um, article format, and more. Then I'm going to talk about my Google Analytics. Uh, I have my author standard operating procedures. Uh, I'm going to look at the keyword rankings. I'm going to show you a few things I'm ranking for. I'm going to talk about link building uh, and then Pinterest. Those are the, the main categories of things uh, that I'm going to look for. Ron, the logo was done on Fiverr for five bucks. Um, own the yard. Okay, keyword research strategy. Uh, so my main strategy is that I target long tail keywords that are low competition. That is my main strategy and that is the number one reason for success here. Um, hands down. Okay, so what I look for is I use Longtail Pro as my keyword research tool. That's my primary tool. I do my best to find keywords that have a keyword competitiveness score of under 30. So if I can find that, that's ideal. I do also target a lot of keywords that are not a KC under 30. I know that maybe sounds a little bit confusing, but I would say probably 50% of my keywords are KC under 30. And, you know, I target those very low competition keywords. Um, but I also tend to look for other weak sites or affiliate sites that are ranking in the top 10 of Google. And that's a good sign for me. So if I see um, two really weak affiliate sites, sort of a sites that have domain authority of under 30, for example, and even if the, the uh, KC of that keyword is not under 30, I might still go after that because I see some weak sites that are ranking. So I go ahead and target that keyword. All right, now um, I've had a lot of questions in the past about what sort of keyword volume am I targeting? So I thought, I, and I just did this today for the very first time to get an actual breakdown of what is the search volume that I'm targeting and how many keywords have I written in that range? So keywords that have under 200 searches per month, uh, I've written 34 articles targeting those keywords. So I target a lot of keywords that are low search volume, okay? Um, those keywords that have between 200 and 500 searches per month, that I did 29 articles. Between 500 and 1,000 searches per month, uh, that's 38 articles. And remember, my site has about 158 articles total. And so that's over 100 of them are targeting keywords that have lower than 1,000 searches per month. Okay, so that is definitely my bulk. My go-to is low search volume keywords. Okay, uh, keywords that have under 1,000 uh, searches per month is the bulk of what I'm doing. Um, However, 
Um, keywords that have a search volume between 1,000 and 2,000 searches, I've done 23 articles. Uh, between 2,000 to 5,000 searches, I've done 20 articles. And then over 5,000 searches per month, I've targeted 14 keywords uh, with 14 different articles. So that gives you a breakdown, just an idea of what I'm doing. You can figure out the ratio there. Um, so I've got a mix of uh, a little bit of everything there. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the site structure overall. Um, what I did for Own the Yard is I focused a couple of things on topical authority. All right, so I want to give you two examples, backyard games and backyard design. So let's, um, let's find those articles, backyard games. So these are what I would call pillar articles. So, uh, and um, I, should, I should mention that uh, Brady is going to be helping me out in the chat. So if you're getting answers from somebody named Brady, he actually does work for me. And so he's answering a lot of questions while I do this live presentation. So if you're getting answers from him, they are accurate answers. Um, just so as a heads up. Um, so here's one of my pillar articles. And this particular article is my longest by far. It's uh, 13,000 words or almost, it's like 12,000 something uh, words. The purpose of this article isn't necessarily to make money, although it is monetized as you can see throughout with some Amazon affiliate links. Uh, the purpose is really to establish myself as a topical authority uh, for backyard games, right? So I want my site to be seen as an authority with everything related to backyard games. So the way that I did that is I created a massive pillar article that writes a huge list of 106 backyard games. Okay, so you can, as you go through here, I list 106 different backyard games that you can play, um, you know, giant checkers to pool noodles to giant bubble wands to Frisbee to Simon Says yada, 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 106, okay? Um, and then, but where it gets interesting, and I wanna make clear that this particular article and my other pillar article aren't necessarily the articles getting the most traffic or making the most money, they're not, okay? I, I'm trying to um, show you my site structure, right? So I've got this big backyard games article, and then as you can see, um, when I talk about every game, I try to link to um, essentially more in-depth articles um, about those particular things, right? So I've written about parachute games, uh, and then I've gone back and written an article on the best parachute games. And I link from this Backyard Games to my parachute games. And I've done the same thing with flying kites. Okay, so I've got flying kites, and then I come in here. By the way, you should check out my best kites article. And then I've done the same with obstacle courses. Simon Says, um, Giant Yard Games, uh, Frisbee, right? So I've probably got 50, maybe not 50, but close, 50 um, internal links from this Backyard Games to other articles on my site that are talking about like the best Frisbee golf Frisbees, right? Or whatever. So, and then the other part of that, okay, so that's that's one, is using all those internal links from one massive pillar article, linking out to all these other individual articles. And then from those individual articles, uh, I link back to this Backyard Games, right? So that's sort of telling Google that, hey, this website, appears to be an authority on backyard games. Not only have they listed out 106 backyard games, but they've linked out to more in-depth articles about those individual games. And from those individual game articles, they've linked back to this massive um, backyard games article. So that's very important and I've done the exact same thing for backyard design, my other massive pillar um, uh, category. Okay, I won't go as in depth, but essentially um, you can see how I've done. I've got um, 70 
backyard design ideas, and then I'm linking out individually to um, you know different articles that talk more about here's some tree stump ideas, here's you know in ground trampoline ideas, gazebo ideas, greenhouse ideas, right? I've linked out to all those individual articles, right? So it's a way to establish topical authority. I felt like I spent a lot of time on that. <laughs> Hopefully that's okay and that makes sense because that's, that's really the way I pictured my site from the very beginning is this topical authority, okay? Um, article length. Um, okay, so for my pillar articles, you know, the backyard games, the backyard design, um, those are 5,000 words or more. Uh, the backyard games one is 12,000 words. So these are massive, massive articles. Now my buying guides, these are my money articles. These are the ones actually making most of the money. Um, these are typically three to 4,000 words in length. Okay. Um, and maybe, okay. And then um, I also have my image ideas like tree stump ideas um, or garden um, uh, greenhouse ideas right, those type of articles. They're images, where it's primarily images, I have, you know, 25 images, or the roundups. Those are about 1,500 to 2,000 words. They're very image heavy articles, okay? Um, then I wanna go over some article formats uh, really quick. So um, I went over the pillar article formats already. Now let's go over the buying guide uh, format really quick. Um, so let me just find a recent, so if I look at my uh, bocce ball um, article, right? So this, the format that I typically follow, these are my money articles, right? The best XYZ keywords. Um, I have an introduction here. Um, and uh, then I review a, roughly five uh, products on Amazon. I'm using the, um, AAWP plugin right here uh, to pull in this image and this data using the Amazon API. And then I do a review, right? I write a nice few things. What do we like? What do we don't like? Then this button is using Amalinks Pro, um, another cool Amazon uh, plugin. And then I can quickly scroll through and you can just see that I review, you know, roughly five uh, products. And, um, you know, they've got lots of opportunities to go over to Amazon. And then I write some more in-depth, you know, maybe some history or some Q&A, how to play, um, what are the best brands, right, to beef up this article, to make it longer, have a conclusion. And that's a typical buying guide article, okay? Uh, and then the other type of article uh, here is just a recent example, is these image-heavy uh, type, I call them image ideas or roundup articles, where it's just a quick list of uh, images. I have 29 images and then just two or three sentences saying, you know, here's, how, here's a bunch of cool ideas for if you have small patios, here's some things that you can do, right, with your, your patio, right? And, and that's pretty much it. Uh, and these do really well on Pinterest. And also often rank really well in Google and bring in traffic from Google as well. Okay. Um, and then WordPress plugins. Um, I was gonna actually log into the back end of my website and just show you, um, just cause I know a lot of people get curious about plugins. Um, let's see if I'm gonna be able to do that uh, really quick. I used uh, the Yoast SEO plugin. I use Amalinks Pro. Um, I use the AAWP plugin. Here we go. Should be able to let you see the uh, back end here. So I'm not trying to hold anything back, um, right? So I'm going to just scroll through my plugins page so you can see, you know, how I'm set up. Um, I use the classic editor. I use add inserter to um, do some call outs, to do some additional actually Amazon uh, product links there. I use generate press premium. I use link whisper. This is my 
plugin tool to do internal linking, and this has been huge in speeding up, speeding up my internal linking process. If you go, go over to linkwhisper.com, you can get on the wait list for that. I'm gonna be releasing it next week. Um, short pixel to help optimize my images, WP Rocket for caching, Yoast SEO. Um, anyways, hopefully that was helpful for, for some of you. I know we've got a lot uh, to cover. Um, so let me get back here to my presentation. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this so far. Um, if this is good stuff so far, just let me know. Type that in the chat. Let me know uh, to keep going here. Um, so let's look at some uh, Google Analytics while you're, while you're typing that in. Um, so on the art.com Google Analytics, as you can see, this is the total traffic since uh, the site was created. Things started, again, it looks like, oh, all of a sudden things took off in March. No, that's not the case. Um, they were slowly increasing every month, little by little. It just doesn't look very big because the gains started to get bigger in later months. If I look at only the Google Analytics, um, or, or sorry, if I look at only the organic search, here's the nice uh, spike uh, again. This is what I planned for all along. It took about six months before it started to show up well in Google, but now it's doing really, really well. Good, Gl glad people are enjoying it. Um, uh, social traffic actually had a little bit of a dip in June, um, but in early July, I'm starting to see a pickup there. Um, so overall, just wanted to show you some Google Analytics uh, really quickly. Um, yes, this will be available to watch later. Uh, it's being uh, recorded. Uh, my author standard operating procedures. Now this is something that I've never really shown before on a uh, live webinar. So I'm gonna go ahead and show that. And I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. Depends on the size of your screen, I think. Um, but this is actually the spreadsheet that I give to my authors. And again, I should clarify, I don't put hardly any work at all into this site. Um, sadly, maybe one to two hours a week. My authors and everybody else, um, they, they're doing all the actual real work. I've just got standard operating procedures um, set up really well. So I have an instructions tab where my authors go through and they actually go, they, they pick the topic that they want to write about that I've got on my keyword topics tab here. Um, they determine the proper length based on some video instructions that I've got right here, right? So I don't have to go and say, oh, this is a 2000 word article or whatever. I've taught them how to do that. Um, and then they write, write the article based on the instructions for the type of article that it is. So you can see I've got all these different checklists. So I've got a buying guide, you know, uh, template that uh, they follow and there's a full uh, checklist that they go through. So my authors, you know, they, they pick the template that they should be following, they follow that, um, they write it in WordPress, they format it for me. Again, here's the final checklist that shows them how to configure the Yoast SEO, the title, the keywords, add the Amazon affiliate links, uh, they do everything. Uh, once it's complete, uh, they move it from the keyword topics tab to the completed articles tab. And when I see it here on the completed articles tab, I just come down here to the bottom and then I know, hey, I need to go edit that and hit publish. Okay. So anyways, that's my uh, author standard operating procedures there. And uh, then let's take a quick look at uh, some of the keyword rankings. Um, this is a screenshot from Longtail Pro. This is just to kind of give you an idea of some of the keywords that I'm ranking on the first page of Google. I rank number one for tree swing ideas. I'm in the top 10 for best ultimate Frisbee gloves, can jam review, um, best wiffle ball bat, how to play tether ball, how to throw a horseshoe, best garden scissors, um, um, all of those things. Chris is asking, how do they generate affiliate links? They just um, copy and paste a short code using um, AAWP, um, using the, uh, they find the product 
and the uh, um, the ASIN um, number on Amazon, and then they just copy paste. That's all it is, right? My my affiliate stuff is pre coded in the AAWP. Um, so here's anyways. I just wanted to show you that you can go check out. On Google, you can see that I'm ranking for these types of things, plus many, many, many other keywords. Okay, link building. Um, I wanna jump into link building. Um, I will just say that I feel like a lot of people wanna skip everything I just said for the last 40 minutes and say that link building is the most important thing. I don't think it is, personally. I think what I just said in the last 30 minutes is the most likely to lead you to success with your niche site. Um, so if you missed any of that, go back and rewatch it. Um, however, link building is important. Uh, and I did build some links for the site. So here's everything that I've done uh, for link building. I did about 100 or so blog comments and those were all outsourced. Um, I don't think that that really did a lot, honestly. It sort of just helped me uh, get indexed in Google and, and tell Google that, hey, this site is around, um, start crawling it, get to know the site a little bit. That's it. I, I don't think it provided a lot of link juice, link value. Uh, link swaps. I did 10 or so of these, maybe 10 or so. I don't know. Maybe it's 15, 10 to 15. Um, essentially, and I've talked about this a couple of times in the past, but basically what this was is I've got another website. Um, I reached out to people that have websites related to Own the Yard, and I said, hey, um, I'd be willing to give you a link from XYZ website if you will link to me uh, from your website to ownthyyard.com. So it's kind of like a three-way link type thing, or even I did a couple of reciprocal links. Okay, so I did 10 to 15 of those. I do think that those helped me get on the map. Uh, then I did outreach through, again, I had somebody else do this for me. Um, I hired somebody. They got about five guest posts, did some outreach, um, and got some relevant links, got some good links there. Um, Authority.builders is a link building service. Um, Maybe I'm just too lazy or I really like to outsource things, but I, I paid uh, them to um, get a eight or nine guest post links uh, for me. So they wrote guest post articles, got those published on other sites for me. Um, I got eight or nine of those. And then from the Hoth, I got about 10 links. Um, and so that's, I think that's it. Let me see. Yeah, so that's it. That's, that's pretty much all that I've done uh, link building wise. And if I were to go back to my, just sort of an interesting note, if I go back to, I'm now showing again, the screenshot that shows all the keywords I'm ranking for. If I look at most of these keywords, um, these pages that are ranking don't have any links built to them. Uh, these aren't the pages that I got all those links for. Um, um, like the croquet sets, yes, I built some links to that one. Um, that might be the only one actually. Uh, all these others like tree swing ideas, I've never built a single link to that. It just ranked based on the content and the topical authority and the entire uh, keyword research strategy that I shared previously. But yes, links are important and that's the total amount of link building that I've done uh, on this particular site. Uh, the guest posts don't generate any traffic, no. Uh, and then, it, it, or very little uh, that I'm aware of. Um, Pinterest, so Pinterest has been an important part of my strategy. This has been 100% outsourced. I haven't done any of this. Um, basically, the strategy has been for every new post that is written, uh, two new pins are created, and those are pinned live to Pinterest, uh, or they're scheduled with Tailwind. Uh, and that's that's pretty much it for uh, Pinterest. But I do think Pinterest has been really important to get me a lot of those natural links. So when I was talking about link building, uh, I mentioned that, you know, I've only built those, whatever that is, 30 links or 40 links. Um, I've gotten lots of other links naturally 
without any of my own effort. And I think a lot of that is because of Pinterest. People see an image on Pinterest that they like, they go to my article and then they uh, post either that image on their site and reference back to my site or they just link to my site, right? So I've gotten a lot of natural links. And so links are important. I just think that there's ways to get them naturally without putting a ton of effort into manually um, doing outreach all the time. So that's my Pinterest strategy in a really short uh, nutshell. Oh, and here's a screenshot um, uh, for Pinterest. You can see I've got 1,800 followers. Uh, I'm following 1,100 people. And again, that was outsourced. Somebody else you know, probably is following people on uh, my behalf. So um, yes, Ron, it was a brand new Pinterest board when I started. Uh, next steps. Basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to ramp up, continue to ramp up content, um, you know, 500 articles. I don't know what my goal is. I'm going to just keep adding articles until I don't see incremental gains um, on that. I'm going to continue to add 15 to 30 new articles each month. And I'm going to just sprinkle in link building every once in a while. It's not going to be a big effort, big focus. And when I see say sprinkle, that maybe will be two or three links a month. Um, I haven't built any links in the last couple of months, but uh, I'd like to get to two or three links a month uh, where I'm actually involved. But mainly I'm gonna just focus on content, site speed, and consistency. I do feel that site speed has been very important and I, it's, it's probably time for me to go back uh, and, and uh, do a little bit better uh, to speed up the site. My goal is $5,000 per month uh, for the site. I think that's very possible, very doable. Um, Okay, I do have just one more thing that I would like to cover before I hopefully answer all your questions. Okay, um, Terrence is asking, what do I mean by consistency? I mean by content consistency, 15 to 30 new articles a month and sprinkling in two to three links a month. That's what I mean by consistency. Uh, so the one more thing that I do want to cover that a lot of people may not be aware um, do you want more training from me? And honestly, this is not the purpose of this webinar. So I'm going to only spend about two minutes here. Um, I'm just sometimes, sometimes surprised that people don't know this about me. Uh, if you want more training from me, um, did you know that I have a full video training course that I've created? Um, it's very in depth. It shows step by step how to create a niche website. Did you know that I followed the exact steps taught in that course to build on the yard? Um, I didn't do anything different than what I had already recorded on those videos. I followed those exact steps that I have in that uh, training course. Um, yeah, it, it's already been there. This is not a new uh, training course. This has been around for, well, more a little more than 10 months. I just followed the steps that were in that course to build on the yard. Um, and did you know that I share another one of my sites, not on the yard, but another one of my niche sites in my training course. So if you join my training course, you can see a different site than on the yard that I built from scratch, built up to making a couple thousand dollars a month. I'm not sure if you knew that. Um, uh, Jeffrey saying he did not know I had a training course. So there you go. Um, do you want my author standard operating procedures? Um, a lot of people already have asked in the chat here that they want that. I've got the standard operating procedures that you've seen, but also all the article templates, the um, keyword research uh, spreadsheet templates. Uh, I have a keyword research calculator, a ton of stuff. I put a ton of effort into um, my article templates and uh, so much more. Um, so I'm not gonna go on beyond that anymore. Uh, if you want it, it's Organic Traffic Formula. Go to organictrafficformula.com. Uh, when I launched the course, it was 597 bucks. Right now, the doors are open, it's $197. If you want it, go get it. Um, I will just say that it is the most in-depth video training course I've ever created. It's super valuable. Tons of people are getting a lot of results following it. 
I'll never be able to create anything better than what I created with organic traffic formula. Uh, and for that reason, I'm not going to create a video training course uh, in the future ever again. Um, my plan, and this is the first time I'm actually saying this, um, but my business model is changing. I'm planning to no longer sell, in, sell information products. I'm only going to be focusing on software products. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm gonna be releasing Link Whisper uh, very soon, and I have other software ideas. Um, I've got a lot of ideas in my head for software products. I want to focus my time and energy on software, um, but because I created Organic Traffic Formula several months ago, and I know it's really good, it's really in depth, uh, I'm going to leave it open for a little bit, um, but I am going to shut it down probably in the next month. And when I say shut it down, um, if you join, you can still have access and you know I'm not gonna uh, restrict your access. You can look at the video training courses and everything, but I'm just not going to create any new uh, information products. I'm not going to try and sell this anymore. I'm going to just uh, focus on software. Um, so if having a training course is valuable to you, um, hands down, this is the most valuable course that I've ever created. It's the exact steps I followed. You can get it organictrafficformula.com. I'm probably going to close it uh, in a month and never do information products ever again. I it, that's not a marketing pitch. I honestly don't care if anybody buys this tonight. That's not why I'm doing this webinar. And so I'm gonna stop talking about it from now on. Um, I, I'll leave the URL there. Um, let's talk about On The Yard. What questions do you have? That's it. That's my presentation, guys. Um, let's, let's jump in. Please uh, ask what questions you have for ownthyyard.com. I'm not going to answer anything about organictrafficformula.com. If you want it, go get it. Um, that's all I'll say about it. Let's talk about Own the Yard. Okay. There's uh, a lot of questions, and I know you guys asked a lot previously. Um, so if I missed your questions, uh, you may have to re-ask that. <laughs> um Okay, let's try to. Okay, so Ed is asking, after you pulled the ripcord on the old people niche, how did you land on this one? Um, yeah, so originally I thought I was going to go into this, uh, the, the senior living niche. Um, I've documented why I didn't do that. This one, um, I'm trying to remember how I originally came up with the idea. I just did a ton of keyword research. Um, I think I went to Amazon and was just looking at lots of different categories and eventually I landed on the outdoor uh, gear category and then sort of filtered down further into uh, sort of the games. I was looking at like croquet sets and bocce ball and frisbee and just a lot of these things and I thought, huh, it might be interesting to just do an entire website on backyard games. And so that was my original idea was to only focus on just backyard games. But then I expanded a little bit to say, okay, how about anything that happens in your backyard games, uh, backyard design, and then just a sort of a catch all of backyard gear. Um, so that's, that's how I originally came up with it. Uh, Ian is asking, what are my monthly costs for freelancers, et cetera? Um, I've documented this in depth as well. Um, on nichepursuits.com. If you read any of my recent uh, monthly income reports, um, and I'm gonna find one here real quick so I can pull that up for you. Um, I, I have all my costs in my, um, in, in a p &L. Boy, it's taken me longer to find one of my recent income reports uh, here than I thought. Uh, I do wanna pull that up for you. Uh, here we go. So if I look at, and again, you can go to nichepursuits.com. You can see all my costs. Um, so about $1,400, uh, between a thousand. Well, that was actually my highest month. So roughly a thousand to $1,200 a month is what I'm spending on my, uh, uh, freelance writers, uh, each month to do that. And so 
To date, I've spent um, a little over seventeen thousand. I'm going to put together the final numbers. Uh, I've spent about seventeen thousand to have the entire site outsourced. I expect my ongoing expenses to be, you know, that maybe twelve hundred dollars per month. Uh, so I'm basically at the break-even point, uh, and everything beyond will be gravy. Um, and so I expect to grow this to five thousand dollars a month. Uh, and if I were to ever sell that. You know, at five thousand dollars a month, we're talking one hundred seventy-five thousand uh, dollar payday. If I, you know, take thirty-two to thirty-four times uh, five thousand dollars, so it's it's um, even if I stopped right now and sold the site, I would probably let's see, twelve hundred dollars times let's say thirty-four. I think I could get that's about forty thousand dollars. So I think I could sell this site today for forty thousand dollars. Uh, I've invested about seventeen thousand. So it's so far, it's already a good investment. Okay, let me get back to the questions here. Uh, Colette is asking about how do I make most of the money. Um, I shared, you know, two thirds, seven hundred and fifty is Amazon, four hundred ish and change is uh, Ezoic ads. Okay, uh, Uris is asking, how many writers did you employ for this one? Um, I've gone through six or seven writers, probably. Okay, and total spent. Um, another question, again, you can go back and see my profit and loss. Um, I've already answered that one. Uh, let's see. Some of these questions. Uh, Federico is asking, is it allowed to put Amazon price? Of course. If you're using a plugin that uses the Amazon API, it absolutely is allowed. Uh, what are the two different Pinterest pins per new article? Um, they are just two different images. That's all. Um, so it's basically, they link to the exact same article, but you have two different images. Sometimes one image performs better than the other. Uh, Skylar says, any pitfalls? Maybe you can clarify that question. Um, a lot of questions about spending. Uh, Chris is asking, what is behind your decision to focus on software products? We can talk about that another time. Let's uh, talk about Own the Yard. Um, with a lower budget, how would we do this? Okay, please tell. Uh, I don't think it's complicated. Um, I think you just write the articles, right? I mean, that's that, that's the reality of it is um, I'm putting very little time um, into this particular site. I'm only putting money into it. If you have more time and very little money, uh, you need to write the articles yourself. And so can you write 10 articles a month? Um, that is you know, two to three articles per week. I think that's very feasible for somebody with a full-time job to be able to write two to three articles per week. And that's what you would have to do. Uh, Kathy is asking, where did you get your ideas for more visual posts? So that was all done with keyword research again. Um, I used Longtail Pro. Um, I also used SEM Rush a lot. You know, once I found another website that maybe was another affiliate site or another uh, site in my niche, I would look at what type of content they were ranking in Google for. And if I could see that they were like image heavy ideas, I would jot those down and write them. Um, uh, Kath, or Colette is asking, can you explain the Ezoic ad program? Is it different from Google ads? Uh, no, it's it's they're a Google ad partner. So it's essentially Google ads. It's essentially the same thing. Uh, there's thousands of different Google ad partners out there, but Ezoic is a platform. You sign up for Ezoic and they manage and optimize the ads for you uh, to hopefully help you earn more. Am I doing any email marketing or planning on it? Uh, no, initially I had an opt-in form and I collected a couple hundred email addresses, but I just have not gotten around to actually writing an autoresponder series. And so, uh, no, I'm not doing any email marketing. 
I don't know if I will. Um, I'll revisit that. Alex is asking, how did you calculate that the niche can uh, give around $5,000 a month? Um, I didn't do any special calculations. I think uh, this site can easily do $50,000 a month. I don't think $5,000 is is the cap. I'm just hoping to uh, eventually get to $5,000. Once I get to five, I'll, I'll shoot for 10, then I'll shoot for uh, 20 or 50. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a huge niche. Um, you know, how did I calculate that? I just, um, there's tons of things that can happen in your backyard. I haven't even written anything about barbecuing or swimming pools. And each of those individually, barbecuing and swimming pools, I know people making, you know, $30,000 a month just with those particular categories, right? So, so $5,000 is, is not, um, yeah, that's not the limit. Uh, how did you decide? Uh, let's see if I can scroll down here. Oh, uh, how did you decide on the topical? Let me see if I can find that again. So many questions. I'm sorry, I missed that question. I don't know where it went. Um, did you hire editors to as well to edit your articles? In the beginning, I did, um, but now I'm just doing that myself. I've got my writers trained so well that uh, it's really just me going in there and, and uh, reviewing quickly and hitting publish. What are some parameters when thinking about the scope of topical authority? Um, when I think about topical authority, I'm thinking about one large keyword like backyard games. Um, I, I don't know that I fully uh, understand or appreciate the question other than I'm looking at a, what I'll say a larger keyword, um, something that gets five to 10,000 searches per month. And if that's sort of the core idea of my website, that's what I try to build a core topical authority article around. Do you consider page speed when choosing WordPress theme? Absolutely. That's why I went with Generate Press Premium. Um, it's known to be fast and lightweight. Uh, could you please tell us once again where you buy or building links? Um, I did several outreach links on my own. Um, I got lots of natural links. Um, and then authority.builders and the hoth.com is where I bought some guest post uh, links. Martha is asking the domain name, is it super important? Um, I would say no. Um, you, I, I, I will just say that you don't want um, a keyword stuff domain if possible, right? So I wouldn't, um, anyways, I, I wouldn't want um, something that's very keyword focused. You want something that has a broad appeal that you can expand to other categories in the future. Um, am I planning to create simple or not so simple info products for my niche sites? No, I'm not. Uh, do you find a correlation between your big traffic volume keywords and earnings or do the smaller keywords convert better? Um, I found that the smaller keywords definitely convert better. Um, I, I haven't done a full analysis, but I would say that most of my Amazon earnings are definitely coming from the lower search volume uh, keywords, whereas most of my display ad earnings are coming from maybe the higher search volume keywords. Um, so, yeah. Um, a full replay will indeed be available. Uh, somebody's asking, will it take long to sell my site through Flipper, Empire Flippers? I'm not planning on selling this site. I expect that I'll own it for a couple of years at least. Um, uh, notice that you didn't use a comparison table. Is there a reason? Great question. Actually, I do have comparison tables on my site, uh, but there's been a recent issue with Cloudflare, and that, um, for whatever reason, is making my uh, Comparison tables not show up right now. Um, I need to go in and clear my cache 
and those tables will show up. So check back tomorrow or in future weeks. You'll see all my comparison tables. When do I think I'll get to $5,000 a month? I don't know. That is a golden question. I definitely hope um, that by the time the site is a year old, which would be September, that I can be making $2,000 a month. Beyond that, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to uh, predict. Ani Zoic, did you maximize user experience or earnings for Own the Yard? Definitely earnings. And I will be going back, that's on my to-do list, is to go back and uh, remove some of the ad locations of Ezoic, especially on some of my Amazon uh, monetized articles. Right now I have a lot of Ezoic ads on those articles. I wanna remove some of those so that the Amazon earnings convert better and people aren't distracted with so many ads. Uh, Festus is asking, how do you avoid keyword cannibalization between pillar article and in-depth single article? Uh, well, for me, there's really no crossover. So my pillar article is backyard games. And then my individual article is best croquet set, for example, right? So there's really no um, keyword cannibalization going on, right? So my backyard games lists 106 different backyard games, and none of those games have the phrase backyard games in them. They're, you know, bocce ball, they're lawn darts, they're uh, trampolines, they're frisbees. They're all very different keywords. Hopefully that helps. How do I manage on-page SEO? So that's a great question. I actually use the Yoast SEO plugin. And um, so as far as keywords, you know, I mentioned the keyword in the beginning of the article, at the end, somewhere in the middle, usually not more than two or three times total in the article, maybe as many as five or six, but that depends. Uh, so I don't mention the keyword a ton, but then I have a nice uh, Yoast SEO title um, that I include the current year in. And then uh, as far as internal linking, um, I am using Link Whisper, which is my plugin to help me build links really fast and really quickly uh, and really relevant links between my articles. Um, but in a nutshell, uh, do your best to link out to relevant articles on your website and then um, of course, if you've got old articles that you haven't linked to, go back and try to build some new links to that article as well. And on-page SEO can be a huge uh, question as well. How easy is it to become the Amazon affiliate, especially if you're outside the US? Um, it's, it's not that difficult, lots of people are doing it. Where do I get my images? Uh, that is Shutterstock. Okay, let me, sorry, I'm going to have to pass a few of these. Um, yeah, I'm going to spend just a couple of more minutes, guys, here. Um, if you've got more questions, please ask them. Um... What is the percentage of Amazon products ordered related to the niche versus not related to the niche? I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I would say it's definitely at least 90% plus are uh, the products I referred them for in my niche. Russell is asking, if, do I plan on uh, switching to Mediavine in the future? You know, I, I've been really happy with Ezoic uh, right now. I'm going to stick with them. Um, I'm just hitting the, the minimum requirement requirements for Mediavine, so I could make that switch. I'm gonna see how it goes for a couple of months uh, on Ezoic, so we'll see. Ian is asking, do you foresee, for, foresee switching from Amazon only to other affiliate programs with better commissions? No, I don't. Um, Amazon's just way too easy, and I get a lot of commissions on products that uh, I didn't refer people for in that 24-hour cookie window. Am I planning to incorporate video reviews? 
Um, no, I don't. I'm going to stick with the types of articles I've been writing. What's the rough ratio of backyard design and backyard games content and keywords? Seems like you target more of the games related topics. Um, and I, I actually think that I now have more design related keywords. Um, so I would say it's pretty close to 50 50. Awesome, guys. This has been great. Uh, tons of questions. Hopefully, you guys have gotten a lot of value out of this. Um, I'm really excited uh, to see how the site continues to do. Um, you know, I think it's going to, to continue to do well. And um, I'm just looking at some of these final questions. Sorry, I'm stumbling over uh, my words. Mike is asking, how do you balance commercials versus uh, info articles in the beginning? Is there a certain ratio? No, nah, I wouldn't worry about it too heavy. Um, you know, 60-40. It would be a rough guess, 60% um, commercial keywords. Uh, awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, I appreciate your time. I'm going to have to wrap it up with that. It's been a little over an hour. Um, I hope that I've answered most of your questions. If not, I've got a Facebook group, um, the Niche Pursuits Facebook group. You can go over there ask questions. Most people will be able to chime in and um, answer those questions. Uh, and if I didn't answer your question, you might be able to, to figure it out by researching ontheyard.com, seeing what I'm doing there. Now that you can see the site live, um, hopefully you can get your questions answered. I hope you guys appreciate what I've just done tonight. I've been working on ontheyard.com for 10 months. I've been keeping it secret. It was really hard for me to reveal this because I now expose myself to competitors, copycats. Don't be one of those people, please, pretty please. Um, don't try to copy me and um, take my site down. Uh, I really have put a lot of effort into this. So let's, uh, let's stay in touch. Like I said, over at my uh, Facebook group, you can follow along. Yes, this webinar will be uh, uh, replayed again. And uh, if you do want more training from me, uh, organictrafficformula.com. Uh, again, um, yeah, it's there if you want it. Otherwise, follow along, nichepursuits.com. Uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Hope you have a good night. Hopefully, it's worth staying up. Um, wherever you may be, you're getting up early. You guys are awesome. Hope you had a great time. And thank you very much. We'll see you guys.